The novelization of Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, was written by Alexander Freed. A good choice considering his excellent work writing some Star Wars military fiction last year with Battlefront Twilight Company. Well, I've finished the book, and I can now talk a little bit about whether or not it reveals anything new about the film. So this video will contain spoilers for the movie if you haven't seen it yet. In my review, I mentioned wishing we had more time with the characters. I just didn't feel like I got to really know them before they all died. Well, the book goes a long way in solving that problem. As written word, it can spend more time literally getting into the heads of each character. Bodhi, in particular, benefits a great deal from the novelization. His arc has a lot more weight. Not only do we get to learn more about his backstory and how he met Galen Erso in the first place, but we get to see him learn what his defection really means. He originally thought it would be a simple matter of leaving the Empire, delivering a message, and living out the rest of his days in peace. Instead, he's imprisoned and tortured, which is unfortunate, but he comes to understand that there are insights only he has, and that if he truly wants to help the galaxy, more will be required of him. He also draws some similarities between himself and K2, and how they're both defectors in a sense. I really like what Freed did with Bodhi's character. Chura and specifically Baze get more quote-unquote screen time, including some scenes that were in the trailers but not the film, like Baze exclaiming that the Empire destroyed their home. They're a good contrast to each other. Baze is portrayed as angrier and full of rage, while Chura is unflappably calm and humorous. We got some of that in the film, but it's more evident here. Saw and Jin's relationship is explored much more thoroughly. We learn about Jin's time in the Partisans, and she interacts with some of the current members, asking if her old friends are still alive. All of the characters' deaths were handled a little more slowly, and I think they had more impact in the book. We get time to know what they're thinking and feeling as they go, and it's sometimes heartbreaking. Which reminds me that when the Death Star fires on Jeddah, there is a great sequence where we see some citizens of the city in their final moments, including the little girl that Jen had saved earlier. Again, it's absolutely heartbreaking. It's very impersonal in the movie, but we get an up-close view of how it goes down, and it reveals that those in the city itself were vaporized painlessly. So the people of Alderaan likely experienced the same thing. But it also tells us that those outside of the immediate blast died quickly, but painfully. Unfortunately, that means Jin and Cassian probably died painfully as well. But the bulk of the new revelations come in the form of supplemental data. Every few chapters, Freed includes things like communications between Galen and Krennic, or the diary of Mon Mothma, or excerpts from religious texts. They all reveal more information, for example, how Galen cleverly snuck the thermal exhaust port into plans. There was an issue of radiation buildup, and Galen offered multiple solutions that would have been more effective than exhaust ports, but more time-consuming. He manipulated Krennic into choosing exhaust ports as the solution in order to avoid more delays, and from there he could easily allow one of them to lead directly to the reactor. This is a fact that Krennic realizes right before he's vaporized, and he knows that his legacy could die soon after he does. Another interesting fact from the supplemental data shows how disjointed the rebel leaders are. Draven thinks Mothma is too hopeful for a peaceful solution, Dodonna is too covert, Organa is too eager to help systems in need and give away their position and resources, and Draven himself withholds information. They're all undermining each other, and it takes Jin and the attack on Scarif to truly motivate them all to work towards one unified goal. And speaking of the rebel leaders, this is one of the best looks at Mon Mothma we've ever had. We learn a little about her childhood and the road that led her to be wanted by the Empire and hidden on Yavin 4. But more importantly, she's represented as just a human doing her best. She accepts responsibility for her mistakes and her part in the failures of the Rebel Council that I just mentioned. She also learns from those mistakes and vows to Jin that she won't forget what the Rebellion did to her. Mon feels responsible for the death of Galen Erso and even the actions of Saw Gerrera, things that were completely outside of her control but were still a result of her ongoing rebellion. I really liked her in this book. I have a couple more just random tidbits I want to mention. Before Tarkin destroys the Citadel, 
He specifically laments the delays it will cause for the projects War Mantle and Stellar Sphere, two of the projects mentioned being in the Citadel Vault. It would be interesting to see what those were, or if they're going to show up in the future. We get a little bit more on Boar Gullet, the tentacle monster that reads Bodhi's mind, but nothing substantial, it's no less strange. Admiral Raddus was so ready to join the fight because he was not human. He knew the Death Star would inevitably be used on his planet, and he jumped into action while all the humans were still debating. His fears would be confirmed years later in the book Moving Target, which mentions that the Empire planned to blockade Mon Cala and Chandrilla until the second Death Star could destroy them both. Finally, Alexander Freed made a reference or two to his other Star Wars book, Battlefront Twilight Company, and that just made me happy so I thought it was worth mentioning. Overall, I'm really glad I read the book. I really do think it enhances some of the shortcomings I felt the movie had. Not to say I didn't like the movie, I loved it, but the novelization addressed some of the nitpicks I had. If you're interested in picking it up, you can check it out on Audible. The audiobook is out now, and you can get it for free by clicking on the link in the description, or going to www.audibletrial.com slash Star Wars Explained. If you sign up for a trial, you'll get a credit for one free book, and you can use it on the Rogue One novelization, or a number of other Star Wars books, or get any book you want. The point is, you get a free book, and you'll be supporting the channel when you do. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and consider checking out my Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.